Hi, I'm Ed Mattingly. Welcome to Sherwin-Williams Fall Impressions for Professionals. We're looking at well-bred brown in quartzstone. Quartzstone is a very durable product. It does not mar. You can wash. Very washable product, so good for any residential setting. Very easy, fast to the wall. So we're going to start with quartzstone base coat. This is basically a tinted aggregate primer. You don't need full coverage, but you want to get the color and you want to get a little bit of this grit and grip. This is the quartz stone in the gold base. Color is tinted to well-bred brown. So we're gonna open this up and box these into a five gallon pail. Good idea to uh, scrape the lid, scrape the edges, and just do a quick check, make sure the color is all the way through. All right. Store did a good job tinting it, shaking it, so we're in good shape. So, dump this quartz stone into a five gallon pail. A gallon of this goes about 150 square feet. So for an average room where it might take a gallon of paint, it'll take three gallons of this product. It's really thick. Thick, fluffy, and friendly. It's kind of like pudding. So you'd want to scrape the excess into the five. All right, so the quartz stone base coat is kind of our, our aggregate primer. It's dry. It dries in about an hour. So we're ready to go. So now we're going to get into the fun stuff. See that little bit of tooth will help the product behave, stay where it's put. All right, so it's really important to use the proper roller. We've got a 9 16th by 9 inch microfiber and a half inch nap by 6 inch for corners microfiber. So these are what, uh, this also comes in a 5 16th. Please make sure you use the 9 16th roller. And then these are the minis as well. So quartz stone, this is the quartz stone gold base in well-bred brown. It's a, it's a, as I said, it's a very friendly, kind of lightweight product, easy to use, but it's also kind of dry. So I've got a damp rag. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna dampen this a little bit just to help it break in a little bit easier, wet the roller a little easier. So we dumped this into a five gallon pail. We've got a grid. I'm gonna get these broken in, okay? Now you will need to use, um, tape off your ceiling lines, tape off your baseboard. So we've got the 9 16 by nine inch microfiber roller, working out of the five gallon bucket. You can roll straight up and down. This product really moves fast and it really spritzes a lot. So you do need, definitely need six inch paper on your baseboards. Um, once you apply it, it's important to do these curving X's. So it'll give you an idea, it's that type of motion. Okay. If you're working with a partner, which when we do the room, we'll actually do that. One person can roll ahead of you. And as they do that, you can come behind them and do this random motion. And you'd use the, the mini roller for corners and ceilings. Okay. And for smaller rooms, it, sometimes it even makes sense to just use the six inch by half inch to do those random curves. There's two reasons for the curving motion. One is it'll help kind of give a nice weighted texture. The other one is, is you get a nice jagged edge as you work across the wall and down the wall. Now the product is very forgiving. You can work in sections so you don't have to chase it a wet edge. And you've got 15 to 30 minutes of working time. So if you see, see a texture that you don't like, you can fix it. So at this point, 
What I've done is I've applied it thick enough to cover the primer, and you can see the raised texture. Uh, now I'm going to take the uh, 10 inch rounded edge trowel. Um, the rounded edges will help with the installation, and this has a slight curve to it. So you'd want to take the curve, maybe take a permanent marker and mar mark that side up. You want it to curve away from the wall, okay? And the idea is, I, I was rolling within my shoulders, kind of like this, so I'm going to want to do the same thing, just basically flatten or knock down or back trowel. It's kind of like frosting a cake, and we're staying short, curving, random motions. Not on a sharp angle, because that would scrape. See? So it's really floating, very parallel to the surface. So it creates an imperfect smooth with some pits, with some slight chatter. It's kind of like landing a plane and taking off. Landing a plane and taking off. It's a quiet, if you, if you hear that, if it's noisy, that means you're scraping too hard, or it could mean that you don't have enough product on. So it's a real quiet smooth sounding technique. And then obviously float out your edges. You, can't, you should have noise here because you're trying to scrape that so you can blend in. Now I'm back on the product and it's going to be softer. If you see something that you don't like, mm -hmm. no problem. Just come back in. Kind of random roll it again. And fix that area I scraped. Another way to know if you're uh, putting too much product on is you'll have a, a whole bunch on here. So I've barely got anything on this, which means I put just the right amount on. It's that fine line between too much and too little. I've got coverage and I'm not removing product. I'm actually just moving it, flattening it. On a smooth wall, the reason for this grit is that because this moves so fast, it's so lightweight, if you didn't have the grit when I was doing this troweling, it would slide, slide too fast. So now uh, we could, I'm gonna show you how to marry a section. So you'd reload, move your ladder, and then you can marry this section. You start maybe four inches away, and then do that random roll, overlap back into that section. Take the knife and blend back in. So it's an imperfect, random, organic texture. If a customer wants completely smooth texture, then you really have to take your time and compress more. But the beauty of this product is actually having a little bit of motion and texture in it. 